Hey everyone, so today I have a great story that actually took place. This isn't something just like from some far off fantasy. This is something that actually took place and it's a great story of how uh, it's not too late if you're in your late 30s to uh, accumulate wealth and it's also a great story on how this man uh, despite having a decent salary uh, he decided to make this into something more worthwhile and it's very admirable like this isn't the only story of a athlete I know of who has realized that he still has many years ahead of him after his main career has ended and decided to do something great about it. So without further ado, here's the thing. This man, his name's um, Alsees Lee Jr. Bridgman. And he's a very successful entrepreneur, but he started out playing 10 years for the NBA back in the 1950s. And this was a time when they weren't shelling out millions of dollars to players to play. And he actually left his professional career after over 10 years of playing right when they started making the big money and shelling out the big money. So he, he didn't make exorbitant extreme amounts of money when he played at the NBA. And guess what he did while he was in the NBA and afterwards? He was at Wendy's. He was learning the business and he was learning it up and working at the local Wendy's during the off seasons and he grew that into owning a franchise for Wendy's and then he started owning multiple franchises and then when he started really understanding business he, he grew it and grew it and grew it and after many years he now has a net worth of uh, around 400 million dollars from these assets these businesses that are earning him a lot of money and now he has over 160 Wendy's, he's branched out to own uh, 100 Chili's restaurants, and he's one of the top 20 richest African Americans according to the Forbes magazine. And it's just so ridiculous, like, uh, I mean, he now oversees over 11,000 employees. And this is something that's it's very admirable because um, there's a lot of careers out there nowadays uh, that, are, that have very short shelf lives. And if you compare the entire span of human civilization, uh, it's very recent that we have all these eccentric, varied, uh, very numerous and very different careers. Like for 99% of human civilization, if you look at the whole thing, you've had very limited choices compared to what we have today. Like literally, I just read an article on 35 job titles that are in demand and they're just so bizarre not bizarre in a weird way like you've never heard about it but it's just like so detailed like the most random stuff like graphic designer and um, uh, co consultant and all sorts of things like you, you can make a living as a model if you're lucky nowadays and now that Instagram's open up there's so many uh, females uh, that even 50 years ago they probably wouldn't make it as a model because of Instagram uh, that platforms open up that opportunity to more individuals um, but again it's it's very interesting because people who have these short shelf lives as models or athletes due to the very nature of the career and how it demands a very youthful a young age to uh, to stay in the game um, it's interesting that they, they realize this and um, a lot of them just surf off their earnings for the rest of their career or you never hear about them much after their career as an athlete but it's very admirable like uh, for instance in addition to Mr. Bridgman there's this man on Shark Tank and he started a ribs company, a boneless ribs company, where he, he packaged and made and sold boneless ribs. And it was this great thing because he was a successful NFL 
uh, football player and then he stopped that and he still had a life it's not like your life is over afterwards and he had all these years and he decided to do this and he quit for a long time and then uh, inspired by his daughter quitting track and saying well you quit your business therefore I can quit track he decided to pick up his ribs business again and he ended up on Shark Tank pitching his business and he, I think he actually got a, a deal and a great investment in his business and it's just interesting how um, oftentimes people think their lives are over at 20 I used to think this myself and as long as you know unfortunate accidents aside many people have a long time ago and it's very wise to think about it in this way because a lot of people live like they're gonna die tomorrow and there's a certain amount of that that you should take into account in that you couldn't you can't always look to the future and just be very miserable constantly in the present because uh, for a variety of reasons one of them being that you can all of a sudden be 50 years old and realize how much of your youth you've missed out on by just not appreciating it when you could and enjoying the journey sometimes the hardship and not knowing what the next day brings and uh, that that struggle to achieve success is very much where the joy happens as well but um, putting that all aside uh, a lot of people spend money like they don't realize they have another 30 years or 40 years 50 years to live unfortunate accidents and illnesses and cancers aside um, and you see it a lot in many youthful uh, kids nowadays and probably a lot of the models and athletes where they spend all the money they make on a monthly or yearly or daily or weekly basis and if they make ten thousand dollars from a modeling gig they'll spend ten thousand dollars on clothing and stuff like that and I've heard stories about like uh, people who have seemingly lucked out genetically or lucked out in the genetic lottery by having good looks or just falling into a situation in life where they're paid to model and then you hear descriptions of the lifestyle it's like party all night do drugs drink alcohol wake up at 2 p.m. go to a modeling gig every week once and then spend all the rest of your time in your room on the computer on Instagram or Twitter and then if you have time another few hours shopping and then it's nighttime again on to nightlife nightclubs bars and so forth and that's it's not sustainable it's, it's not healthy it's like people l who luck out they use that as a crutch and then they just live like that and so you kind of have to realize that sometimes it's a good thing if you just happen to have some hardships. Maybe it'll teach you some lessons in life so you don't end up in a state of lethargy or uh, just uh, complete slothness because of some initial fortune in your life where you're exceptionally beautiful and you can get paid to model. And uh, so, you know, you want to start learning, you want to start cultivating yourself, having a, a, a good life, uh, a life where you work hard. And uh, again, this Bridgman guy does a great job of doing that. He realized this and he didn't just say, okay, I'm just going to be an a, a NBA player and that's going to be what defines my life. And it's very interesting because this, this man, he's accumulated this wealth and it seems like he's had a very private life. Um, doing so and uh, I applaud him for all his work and uh, let's all work together and you know if we can just do a, a fraction of what he can do we don't need 400 million dollars we, we just need a fraction of that and I think we, we can all do a little bit better and that'll be enough for us again wealth and fame and uh, accomplishments and achievements doesn't necessarily guarantee happiness um, it's interesting because there's a lot of NFL football uh, athletes who have um, apparently committed suicide during or after uh, their careers and 
slash or done horrendous things or just had very tumultuous lifestyles uh, f rich being rich and having money does not imply that everything else in your life is going to be peachy fine or that you're some god that excels in every other area of your life um, having a good lifestyle requires skills in a lot of areas just look at um, OJ Simpson uh, a very successful athlete had you know, problems from what I can tell in personal relationships to the point where uh, it seems like he had a lot of arguments um, with his wife and now and then he ended up in this murder case who knows if he actually committed a murder or didn't but as you can see um, uh, you can admire someone for how much money they make but um, uh, one of the reasons why I admire people like Warren Buffett is because uh, they often times have a very well-rounded lifestyle overall like no one's perfect Buffett isn't perfect um, but generally uh, he said one of the things he says is that um, when you get to the age I get to you start measuring your success in the people that you want to love who actually love you not so much how much wealth you accumulate and I think that's so true like uh, um, if and w another thing he said I don't even have to say in my own words he says it so perfectly he says um, I know a lot of people who are exceptionally wealthy, but um, even though they attend all these charity auctions and dinners and have all these buildings named after them, no one that, that he knows actually genuinely loves him. And I don't think that's real success to me. And I think that's it's very it's somewhat deep profound thing it's like man this this man seems to have accomplished a lot done so much achieved so much wealth and no one he knows actually genuinely loves him maybe a lot of people flash him fake smiles or maybe uh, cater to whatever he wants to please him maybe for his money but um, that's not something that you want and so that's something I need to work on for sure and I think everyone else out there can start working on and there's always room for improvement I know there is for me and so uh, you, you guys kind of have to think about all that and it's I think it's very useful and um, yeah let this be a lesson you know work on your uh, learning and improving and creating wealth and be like this man who decided to work at Wendy's in his off season um, and start learning about businesses and stuff like that and uh, I think uh, oftentimes you're not singularly defined by one specific thing uh, it's not like if you choose basketball for the rest of your life that's all that you will ever be this one dimensional character and Mr. Bridgman has proved it and I, I think generally most of us have lots of interests um, uh, but you of, often have, times have to choose one big interest that you have to stick to for financial success maybe two um, uh, so don't go crazy and just be a jack of all trades oftentimes you want to stick to one thing computer programming or basketball but oftentimes as Mr. Bridgman proves um, that one thing doesn't have to define you. You may have enough time in your life to be great at two things or three things. Um, and uh, that's all I really want to say in this video. If you liked it, leave it a like. If you like, if you found this video informative, made you think, helpful, uh, go ahead and share this with someone you think would benefit from this. Uh, and uh, also, if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. It'll let you know when my new video's out. And most, most importantly, leave this video a like if you liked it. I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.